This is the start of a, of a tour for, for Julie Andrews in Bloomington Normal, two concerts, and you have to be, I would think, a little excited right now. Uh, very excited and very nervous, too. <laughs> is it really? Um, now you're an old pro. I shouldn't say old because uh, we don't want to stress anybody's age, but you look great. You really do. Thank you. That's the kind of you. You can say old. <laughs> Anybody that's been in the business this long must relax after a while. You don't get all that excited about a, about a new show, do you? Yeah, I do. I do. I think you, the, the older you get, the more you have under your belt, the more nervous, more reason you have for nerves because you've got to be as good as you were before and hopefully better. You know, all of a sudden you made me think of the movie SOB because it's kind of like it is. A successful film producer turns out a flop and uh, he wants to end it all. That's right. That's right. Well, I hope tonight is not a flop. <laughs> you have um, come from England, I believe. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background because it's been a long time. I know we worked in, or you worked in movies like uh, Mary Poppins and uh, Sound of Music. For some reason, we just, we associate you so closely with those. Uh, I was born in uh, England and came to the United States when I was about 18 and uh, worked on Broadway for a number of years and uh, was in the wonderful show called My Fair Lady and Camelot and uh, really got a phenomenal experience working with people like Richard Burton and Rex Harrison and uh, eventually I got fortunate enough to come to um, Hollywood and I've been making films and living there ever since. You know, there's so many times when Hollywood has messed up. They've taken a terrific show off of Broadway and ruined it by changing cast and all. If My Fair Lady would have had you in it, I think it would have been a much better movie. Oh, that's nice of you to say so. In those days, it was very hard for them to cast me in the film because I really was only known on Broadway. No one across the country knew my name. No one in the rest of the world knew my name. And so I can well understand why they'd want to go with a big box office star. Come to think of it, when they came to things like Music Man, and they took Robert Preston and put him in the film, turned out to be maybe one of the best musicals ever made. Yeah, it did. Uh, I think he was probably better known because he had been a movie star before. So uh, I come to think of it, if they'd have taken Mary Martin from Broadway and put her in Sound of Music, we wouldn't have seen you either, would we? <laughs> there you are. You see, you you don't have any argument left. <laughs> <laughs> it all went downhill there. What do you enjoy doing the most? Do you enjoy uh, dancing, singing, live audience film? Uh, I enjoy as much that is as different as possible and, and that is as varied. Uh, I don't like to be in a rut. I don't like to do one thing all the time. I don't like to go back. I like to go forward if I can, and I'm very fortunate in that I mostly can. Um, and although tonight I am looking back, I'm also doing an awful lot of stuff that I love to sing. And uh, I don't get a chance to do that very often because I hide mostly behind a role. I'm either Maria von Trapp or Mary Poppins, and I have to sing her songs. But tonight I get to sing some of mine. Since we, I want to get it up to the new album here in a minute, but since I have a four-year-old and also a one-year-old, Mary Poppins is very big at our house. In fact, uh, my daughter Kate was just delighted to, to see you today because of that. What was it like working with, uh, with Dick Van Dyke and, and working for the Disney people? Oh, that was the first film I ever made, and it was a fabulous learning experience because they were gentle and kind, and uh, because it was such a difficult technical film with all the animation and the special effects, you had to be very, very disciplined as well. And it was a joy working with Dick. He was, well, he is a lovely man. One of the greatest scenes I think ever put on film was the one where you were doing the live action and also the animation together. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And hard to do because uh, most of the animation wasn't there when we were doing the live action and we had to pretend it was. SOB came along. I don't know why I'm thinking of SOB, but uh, that whole business of, uh, of Hollywood. In fact, I watched it last night. It was, oh, it's one of those things that we have the tape of. <laughs> and and uh, uh, that had to be a departure. Not only, uh, we've all thought of you as a Mary Poppins, very innocent type of uh, person. Uh, purity on screen. And uh, was this something that Blake talked you into doing? I mean, was this supposed to be total shock or? Uh, well, uh, actually, I haven't. Uh, set out to deliberately change my image. What happens is that if you do something very, very successful like Sound of Music or Mary Poppins, people remember you for that and they don't remember all the smaller films that go by the wayside. And really, from the early days of my career, I've tried to do as much that is as varied as possible. But um, having said that, yes, my husband, I guess, knows me better than anybody else and does write wonderful roles. Yeah. Well, it was a terrific show and, I, and, and I, you were perfectly cast for that particular role because the, the movie in the movie was a very innocent kind of a film that wasn't going to make it, and consequently, in order to draw attention, it's, I guess it was pretty reflective of the times in the country. We're, we're seeing films that were um, appealing to other interests, I guess, to get people to go to the box office. Um, it was a funny movie. Yeah, it was also a wonderful opportunity for, 
for Blake and for me to, to kind of poke fun at the industry and ourselves particularly and that kind of thing. Is Hollywood any more relaxed? I think there was a time when it was, uh, everybody was so concerned about, uh, about the dollar and the dollar got to be pretty tight for a while. It seems like maybe the last few years Hollywood is uh, starting to turn things around. They're starting to make it quite a bit of money again. Well, that's for sure. And, and I've seen more ups and downs in, in the industry, as it's called. Uh, but I, I think it'll always be concerned with the dollar. I mean, uh, the, the endless fights are obviously to do with budgets. And, and films cost more and more and more to make these days. It's very hard to make a really reasonable film. But there's so many opportunities, I would think, now to make money with it, be it video or or anything else? Well, of course, the, the world, you know, the communications in the, in the world are just spreading so rapidly. So, yes, there's a lot more ways to sell them. Just before we wrap it up here, I want to ask you about the album, the new album called Julie. Nice pink-colored album and all, and you do some, some old standards like T for Two on it. Yeah. Why did that come out at this particular time? It came out as a kind of, uh, I guess, a happy accident would be a good description. Uh, I made it as a private album, as a gift for my husband about uh, two years ago. And uh, I just had piano, bass, and drums, and myself, and we sang some of the songs that I know he loves. And um, it was a birthday gift. And he was so pleased with it, and somebody heard it and said, you really ought to do something with it, and it grew a little. And then the people who are uh, producing it at the moment, USA Records, came in and said, well, we'd love to release it, and could you put in a couple more upbeat numbers? And the album kind of grew and had a life of its own. I want to wish you a lot of luck. I guess we don't want to wish a lot of luck backstage, do we? You want to say break a leg, break a microphone, whatever it takes to make sure the show's a, a success. And uh, thank you for bringing it to Bloomington Normal for the first, for the first run of it. And uh, good luck. It's going to tour for how long, you figure? I think it certainly is going to tour for uh, two months, though. Certainly all the month of November and all the month of January. And I'll take all the luck I can get. You can go on wishing me luck. <laughs> for somebody that's worked very, very hard and, and rehearsed awfully hard, you look terrific. And it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks.